Hi everyone, it's Tawny. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about brands that I sometimes forget even exist. And I feel like they're brands that they're kind of in the back of my brain and I kind of sort of know that they're there, but they just don't really make an appearance too often. One of these brands I like had no idea even existed until I like was doing research for this video and I popped up and it like came up and I was like, oh, well that's something I can add to the list because I never remember that this thing exists. These are luxury brands. So they're gonna be in the higher range price wise of all the brands that you can find. Um, a lot of these brands have fragrance lines that are kind of like the main reason that they're popular. Some of them have clothing, but the majority of them kind of use makeup as the back way of getting money, if that makes sense. Like they already have something going for them. So then they decide they want to do makeup to make even more money. So then they charge an outrageous amount of money to get you to buy from them even more and to like keep their name going. But the makeup's not always like the best. Um, these are brands that kind of like between packaging and quality and just the way they look in general, you might not always think that they're great makeup because they either look dated or they look like something your mother would wear or your grandmother would wear, or they just don't look good enough to actually even purchase. There's one brand in here that the stuff is so ugly to me that I would never think about buying this stuff just because the packaging is so awfully ugly. Um, so let's get right into it. And the first brand we're going to be talking about is Dior. Now Dior is a brand that I would feel is like the highest up of, I actually know it exists. I see a good bit of stuff from them on Trend Mood. They're talked about a good bit on YouTube. So they're a brand that a lot of people, we kind of forget about them until they're talked about, but then we're like, oh yeah, we knew that they were there. You know, they have the eyeshadow palettes there, the, um, backstage palettes. They have different colors. They're typically, I think like nine shadows. I'll have pictures up here for you to look at of the brands and they are very popular with, um, I would say with like an older generation, like people that are, you know, older than I am and I'm 25. So I say older as not anybody older than me, not meaning that like you're old. It's just everything older than me is older than me. Like I, I, I just like not to be rude, it's just the way it is. Um, their lipsticks are very popular and I feel like a lot of their stuff could be good and it like they try to be good, but it's not quite like they at least try. I feel like this is one of the brands that actually puts a little bit of effort into the makeup so that it's not just crap and expensive stuff they're throwing out. It's actual legit stuff people want to buy. Um, I've heard really good things about some of their lip products and they're, I believe they have a foundation that is pretty decent. So people don't necessarily like think they're terrible. It's just that they're not always marketed for a younger audience. And I feel like those are the people who are really looking for makeup. So I feel like sometimes the people that are buying Dior are buying it because it says Dior, not because it's actually good makeup. Whereas us younger people are looking for good makeup regardless of the name and who is it, you know, who's behind it. Although we do have our ethical limits, but um, that's a whole other thing. The next brand I want to talk about is Chanel. Now, Chanel is a brand that I didn't know what they sold other than that infamous bronzer. And I've heard lately that since they reformulated, that bronzer is crap. I've heard the formula is just not as good. It's just not what people are looking for. And the brand as a whole isn't terrible, but it's just so overly expensive that people just don't want to buy from them anymore. Like there is a image I'm going to be posting with the price hopefully still on there that you can see it. And it is the Ultra Wear Shine Liquid Lip Color Set for $120 for three uh, liquid lip colors, liquid lipsticks, if you will. And I just think that's so overly priced that like, why? And the packaging is nothing special. There's nothing like wow about it. There's one we're going to talk about that I would actually like the packaging could be a factor, but this is not one of them. And I'm kind of like, why? Like what makes you so special that we should buy into this? And I feel like they just Chanel and they're like, oh, that's so cool. But it's like, are your products even actually good? Or are they just like trash that you're selling people with your name on it, which that's not a good thing either. Next is YSL, which is Yvonne Saint Laurent. And excuse me if I say that wrong. Um, I am not good at pronouncing things that are not straight up, you know, English. And, well, American English, I should say. Um, this brand, they've been 
pretty in the makeup realm for a while. I feel like people really know about them. They've tried their products, but I feel like as of late, they've kind of just been pushed aside. I remember when the um, new bear line came out, it's NU as a new, like it's a fancy way of saying new or whatever. I remember when that came out and people were like, we don't really know what this is supposed to do. Like, why should we care about this? And that kind of, for me, triggered like this downfall of like, YSL's not doing anything. This was like a last ditch effort and it's not really like going anywhere. And I feel like this brand as a whole like had that potential and just never lived up to it. And then it kind of like fell flat. So I feel like this is really a brand that like really needs that extra little bit of a, like a push. And I don't know how long, like how difficult that would be. Um, some of their products have been very lackluster for me, especially the Clutch eyeshadow palette. To me, when I first saw this on Trend Mood, what, like a year or two ago, it looked so boring and bland that not even putting YSL on it was enough to like reel me in. Like I'd rather buy a perfume that's like legit YSL than get a makeup product that looks like crap that I don't really feel like would perform that well. Like just because it's a luxury brand and they're luxury items doesn't mean they're necessarily going to be like that great of products that would convince me that like they're worth actually picking up and trying. Next up is Girl On. Now this is a brand that I tend to forget even exists half the time. This is like the lowest one for me and like knowing that it's there. I tend to always forget that it's like a brand. Nobody really talks about it. Sometimes people will feature like one little thing here and there or they'll talk about the name. But I feel like a lot of times when people do that, they don't actually have anything good to say about the brand. It's very negative, like, oh, I tried this and it sucked and here's why you shouldn't buy it. It's not so much like, look at this new product I got from Girl On. But they do have some interesting lipsticks and I have to say the compacts are gorgeous, but the all-in-one lipstick in a prestigious uh, packaging edition or whatever it's called, $290 for like just packaging and it's kind of ugly like I don't like that oval like the way that it is like um it's like I don't want to say so. I don't really like that oval packaging that they have going I'd rather have something square and rectangular but that's just my personal opinion there's somebody out there who actually likes this but it just isn't quite it but the little bee on it man not worth 290 but the bee on it oh man if other brands would do that and like maybe charge like 50 60 dollars then i could see myself like splurging and like drunk me buying it and like all that random crap but not so much something that's 290 dollars. i at least have a little bit of like pride and dignity to know i wouldn't do that and i feel like ugh, i don't know who out there would buy that that's the thing like who out there sees like a little tiny bee on a lipstick container and is like, I have to buy this $290. That's nothing. Let's buy this. Like who was this brand even for at this point? Like who would buy from this brand if they're going to charge that much money for this sort of thing? Like I don't understand. And who would buy it? That's a thing. What dumb person out there would buy this? Like I just, oh my gosh. This is just one of those brands that like, they try to have their moment and they really don't. And I don't know if Guerlain has perfumes or if they have clothing or if they're like a, a handbag type company. I know some of these have handbags, but they're just to me a brand that if they were to like close up shop, I would never know and never care. Last up is Valentino. And I um, recently talked about this, like within the last year, talked about this in either an anti-haul or a no, uh, new makeup nonsense bingo. And I did not have anything good to say about this brand. Um, I thought this makeup launch and the makeup that they were coming out with was very underwhelming. The packaging was very bland and boring and very like, my mom is almost 60 years old and I feel like she would be interested in this packaging because it's very nostalgic for her. Not that it's actually good packaging and not that my mom has good taste, but because it's nostalgic. Meaning it's like what older makeup did look like back like a long time ago. But their Go Clutch Refillable Compact Powder Packaging, ooh, I know it's supposed to be like a clutch bag and it has the little like dangly string the dangly metal whatever for like the handbag strap but ugh, 
I would never ever buy that because I think that packaging is hideous. Like there is nothing convincing me that I need to buy this packaging wise. And none of the product that like is inside of it is really helping its case either. Like I am so underwhelmed by this brand and by all of the makeup they recently released that it makes me like never want to buy from them again. Like if this is what you're starting out with, like, ugh. And maybe that's like their pink and gold is their like color scheme. And that's like what they go with everywhere within the brand. But to me, it's not quite like, it's an ugly shade of pink. Like I like pink. I used to not like pink, but I like pink now. And this is like horrible pink. Like I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. And that's the problem with some of these brands is like they're trying too hard, but also trying to stay luxury and like fancy and it's just not doing it for him and it's just not doing it for me and I would not personally buy anything like I just can't see myself buying from any of these brands do you guys see yourselves ever buying from these brands have you ever bought from these brands is there anything that's actually worth trying out that makes these brands like worth looking into or should we just like push them aside and forget about them let me know in the comment section down below thank you guys so much for watching this video don't forget to like share and subscribe ring that notification bell down below so you get notified on when i upload the next video and i'll see you then guys bye